hair loss, nausea, vomiting, reduced immune response, fatigue. These could all be symptoms of a severe disease, but in fact, they are side effects of a very common treatment. At least a third of us living on Earth today will develop cancer during life. In many cases, our best weapon against the disease is chemotherapy, where a drug is injected into the patient's bloodstream in order to kill the rapidly dividing cells. The big problem is that the drug spreads to the entire body and damages our healthy cells. This is what causes all the nasty side effects that I just mentioned. Sometimes they become so bad that the treatment is stopped. And this brings us to the next challenge. When all the cells in our body share the chemotherapy, only a small portion, as little as 0.01% of the dose, actually reaches the tumor. That's only one part in 10,000. So if this is the amount of drug the patient would get, only this little reaches the right place. So as a team of cancer researchers, we want to deliver more drug to the tumor and less to the rest of the body. That way we can reduce the dose, reduce the side effects, but still have a good effect of the treatment. So how can we do this? One option is to encapsulate the drug into tiny carriers, which we call nanoparticles. A nanoparticle is so tiny that you could fit a thousand of them in the width of a human hair, but they are still large enough to carry a lot of drug. Now, I will tell you a story about our nanoparticles and their journey of reaching and beating the cancer cells. First, we inject the nanoparticles into the bloodstream. In contrast to the small chemotherapeutic drug, the nanoparticles are too large to escape from the blood vessels in most of our healthy tissues. In the tumor, however, the blood vessels have porous walls, almost like a sponge, so that the nanoparticles can escape. This way, we have a targeted carrier that transports the drug to the diseased cells. The nanoparticle acts just like a truck with a GPS, carrying a large payload to the correct address. This way, we can deliver about 100 times more drug to the tumor. So far, so good. But we have another challenge. These nanoparticles only reach the cancer cells that are closest to the blood vessel. The cells that are far away are not affected. But in order to have an effective treatment, it is really important that the drug reaches all the cancer cells. So these nanoparticles need our help to reach all the way. Luckily, we have a strategy which could make the particles even more effective. These nanoparticles are really special because they can form tiny microbubbles. Here is a model of our microbubbles. And this is what they look like in real life a spherical shell of tiny, tiny nanoparticles with gas inside. Now we can inject the microbubbles into the bloodstream, and then we apply ultrasound waves to the tumor. The ultrasound waves will make the microbubbles oscillate and eventually burst so that the nanoparticles are released. And these vibrations from the bubbles will massage the blood vessels and the tissue around them and cause even more pores and this way, we create a local force that can push the nanoparticles out from the blood vessels and deeper into the tissue. I have used an advanced microscope to image this in tumors in mice. You see the nanoparticles in green and the blood vessels in red. In tumors that were not treated with ultrasound, we see that there are many areas left without nanoparticles. But by applying the right type of ultrasound waves, we see that many more nanoparticles are delivered. This way, we can deliver about 250 times more of the dose to the tumor compared to injection of only the drug by itself. That means that we could now give the patient this much drug and have the same effect as this previous dose. For the patient, this could mean less side effects, improved quality of life, and prolonged survival. We have now followed the bubbles on their journey through the blood vessels until they reach the tumor. We have seen that the nanoparticles are delivered into the tissue and that the ultrasound waves help them to reach the cancer cells far away. The next step is to get the drug all the way to the target. And for the drug to work, 
we have to deliver it into each and every cancer cell. To study this process, we grow cancer cells in the laboratory and look at them with a microscope. What we see is that the nanoparticles are protecting and camouflaging the drug, and that the cancer cells happily eat our nanoparticles. So this is good news. But the drug is still encapsulated. In order to have an effective treatment, the nanoparticles now have to release the drug exactly when and where it's needed. Because we can tailor the composition of the nanoparticles, we can decide how fast they should degrade. So after they have been eaten, they will eventually dissolve so that the drug is released inside the cells. Then the cancer cells will finally stop dividing and eventually shrink and die. Finally, the nanoparticles have then beaten the cancer cells. So this is very exciting technology, and we've shown some promising results so far. Based on these results, we performed a small treatment study as a proof of principle. We've treated mice with breast tumors two weeks in a row and measured the tumor growth for several months afterwards. Tumors that did not receive any treatment grew continuously. When we gave the animals microbubbles, we saw that the tumor growth could be reduced for some time. When we treated with tumors with ultrasound, in addition to microbubbles, we saw that the tumors shrunk and disappeared and that the animals were actually cured. So this is really great. We still have many years of research ahead and a lot of things to investigate. But our aim is that ultrasound in combination with microbubbles will one day be used in a clinic to make already existing drugs more effective. So we are working really hard to get there and we are now doing three different things to get closer. The first is that we're testing this technology for different types of cancer in mice to determine which types of tumors respond to such treatment. This information can in the future be used to select only the patients that will respond well. The second is that we're imaging the details of what is actually happening to the bubbles inside the blood vessels. This reveals new knowledge to us, which allows us to optimize the technology. The third is that we're working with different types of microbubbles with other properties to really learn more about what works best. These bubbles can be injected together with drugs or nanoparticles, and some of them are about to be tested in clinical trials in patients very soon. So, a technology like this has great potential. With the nanoparticles, we can not only deliver one drug at a time, we can encapsulate combinations of drugs which we know will work well together. In addition, ultrasound and microbubbles can be used for different types of tumors because we can apply the ultrasound locally exactly where we want to treat. And that also opens up for another really fascinating application, namely brain treatment. The brain is well protected from all substances in the blood and only allows specific molecules to enter which our brain cells need. This is what's called a blood-brain barrier. And because of this barrier, it is really hard to deliver drugs to the brain. And for many diseases, there is still no available treatment. But there is still hope. With the use of ultrasound and our bubbles, we have seen that we can open up this barrier temporarily and deliver nanoparticles to the brain. In this image, you see a rat brain with a green spot exactly where we treated with ultrasound. That means that we can deliver drugs to the brain cells. This could make a big impact for treatment of brain cancer, but we think that this in the future also could enable a gentle delivery of drugs to other serious brain diseases, such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. So sometimes the smallest ideas can make the biggest changes. Thank you. <laughs>